said about her? He said, she probably believes in the rapture. <laughs> and I wanted to say, glory to God. So yeah. I, I believe in the rapture. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. I want you to take your Bible this morning and turn with me to Exodus chapter 3. Uh, last Monday, uh, if you uh, follow the daily bread, but last Monday, uh, we were reading in uh, Daily Bread, and it was all about the, the burning bush. You know, the bush that, that uh, Moses saw in the desert of Midian. And, uh, and I said to my wife, after we had our devotions and prayed and everything, and I said, you know, I got a sermon about that. I, I don't know where it is. I haven't any idea. Uh, but, I, but I got a sermon about that, and so afterwards I went into my study and I dug and hunted and searched, and I found it. Amen. Uh, I, it doesn't look like I preached the sermon since 1987. 1987. Wow. And uh, so I got it out and I, I, I sharpened it up and brightened it up and tried to bring it up to date and so on. And, and I'd like to preach it this morning. It's entitled, The Bush is Still Burning. The Bush is Still Burning. Look, in, look at the, the passage. Uh, beginning in verse uh, 1, it says, Now Moses uh, kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw nigh, <coughs> draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And God said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, taskmasters for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the, the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of, out of that land into a good land and large and unto, the, un, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Pizzerites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And, and I have also seen the, the oppression therewith, wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Now, come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said, yes, sir, I'll be glad to. <laughs> now, he didn't say that. Now he offered up all kinds of excuses and uh, didn't want to go. Wasn't, wasn't planned on going, but God convinced him. And this is what he said. This is what he said. I love this. Uh, he said, uh, I'll go with you. Wow. Look at verse 12. And he said, certainly, I will be with ye. You know, you know, 
someone say, may say to you someday, I want you to teach a Sunday school class, and you say, well, I can't do that. And I say, God will be with you. Somebody, uh, perhaps with a voice, uh, is asked us to sing a song, and you say, well, I can't do that, I can't sing. <coughs> and I say, God will be with you. Someone says, I want you to preach on Sunday, and you say, well, I can't preach, I, I can't do that. And I say, God will be with you. That's enough. You don't need anything else. As long as God is with you, uh, you, you can get the job done. You go to work tomorrow, and uh, God says to you, I want you to witness to this person or that person, and you say to yourself, I can't do that. But you can, because God will be with you. I want you to keep that in mind as you leave this morning. I want you to understand that God will be with you. And so let, let's, let's bow our heads for prayer, please, as we, as we think about this, this message about God and, 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 and the burning bush. Our Father, I pray that you would minister to our hearts this morning. Uh, our hearts are heavy. We, we, we thank you for your, your blessing, your goodness. We thank you for all that you have done for us. And I pray that you'll bless this message this morning to our hearts. Bring to my mind that which you would have me to say. And I'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Two things I want you to, I want you to notice about this, this passage, particularly as it relates to the bush. The first thing you'll notice is that, is that uh, uh, the, 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 the bush is not being consumed. That's what it says there. The bush was not consumed. Now something else is that the fire, the fire must have lost its ability to consume. Fire does that. Fire just literally consumes things. But fire must have lost its ability to consume. And then, and then the bush lost its ability to <coughs> be consumed. Two things. Supernaturally. And that's the kind of thing that excites us. We get excited when we see things happen that are supernatural, above the natural realm of things. Well, let me ask you a question. Why is it that we get excited about the supernatural and we don't get excited about the ordinary? Isn't God in both of them, David? What's the difference? What's the difference if a man is healed of cancer by chemotherapy or by direct act of God. God is in both of them. So why, why do we get excited about one more than the other? Now the reason I bring this up is because, because Moses was doing something very ordinary. He was tending sheep. Sheep are the dumbest animals that ever walked the earth. And Moses had the privilege of leading these dumb sheep all over the desert from one place to another. I mean, I don't know anything more ordinary than that. And yet, in the, in, in the midst of something ordinary, God does something supernatural. He inflames a bush that will not burn up. And I say to you this morning that the bush is still burning. The bush is still burning. Particularly as it relates to three particular items. First of all, first of all, let's talk about, let's talk about the nation of Israel. Many, many have tried to extinguish the flame. From, 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 from the time God spoke to uh, Mo or Moses uh, in the, or Abraham uh, in, in the wilderness. 
or in Ord of the Chaldees, actually. And God said, I want you to get out of Ord of the Chaldees, and I want you to go to a land that I'll show thee. And then he said to him, he said, uh, I'm going to make of you a great nation. Yeah. And through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And then he said this. He said, I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse them that curse thee. Yes. The nation of Israel is a non-consumable bush. You cannot extinguish its flame. It continues to burn. When God appeared to Moses in the desert and said to him, I want you to go and, and, and bring my people out of bondage, they were, they were enslaved. They had been so for over 400 years. And, 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 and they were in this awful, terrible bondage that, that the Pharaohs had put them under. And God appeared to them, to, to Moses, and he said to him, Now I have seen their affliction, I have felt their sorrow, and I have heard their cry, and I want you to go down, and I want you to deliver them from bondage. I want you to be my hands, and I want you to be my feet, and I want you to be my voice to go to the Pharaohs, and I want you to, to, to deliver them from this awful bondage. And that nation, ladies and gentlemen, that nation that was brought out of Egypt is still alive today Amen. on planet Earth. Amen. You, can't, you can't destroy Israel. Many have tried but have failed. That, that nation exists today on the very east end of the Mediterranean Sea in a little patch of land not even as big as the state of Vermont. 8,000 square miles is all that it has. Its population is about 4 million Jews. And yet, yet <coughs> people have tried to push them into the sea but have failed. Oh, I, I, you know, all I have to do is remind people of the Pharaoh. I remind them of Nebuchadnezzar and Haman and Belshazzar and, and, and the modern Adolf Hitlers and the, and the uh, Husseins and, and the Egyptians and the Jordanians who have tried to push them into the sea, but they have failed. You can't destroy this nation. The bush is still burning. A friend of mine some time ago asked me, why is it that God is still blessing America? Why? I mean, given the fact that our nation has, has sunken into the worst kind of depravity that you can even imagine. I mean, the perversion of this nation is so awful, so wicked, so rampant that, that you wonder why God doesn't just come down and strike the whole nation out of existence. And yet, yet God continues to bless America. And so I'll tell you what I told him. I said, it's not because America was founded on Christian principle. It's not because uh, we opened our arms to, to the migrating world. It's not because we're a, 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 a representative democracy. And it's not because, because we have thousands of churches uh, all over this nation of ours, and, and we have millions of Bibles, and we have sent out missionaries all over the world. That's not the reason God continues to bless America. If you want to know why God continues to bless America, just look at Exodus or Genesis 12, 3. Right. That's, all, that's all you need to see. If you bless Israel, God will bless you. If you curse Israel, then you'll be cursed. I've often said, you let, you let the, the liberal rabble-rousers uh, that, are, that, that are 
propagating socialism all over this country. You let them in <coughs> office, and, and, and you, you, you let them continue to curse Israel, and, and the hand of blessing will be taken off of this nation, and it will not be long until, until it's part of the rabble-rousing uh, segment of, of would-be societies. The bush. The bush is still burning. You can't destroy it. And those who try might just as well reach up and grab a hold of bolt of lightning. They might, you know, they'd be better off to, uh, playing in a den of rattlesnakes than to mess with Israel. Amen. Mm -hmm. You mess with Israel and you, you invite the judgment of God upon your life and upon your nation, the bush is still burning. And it will continue to burn. But let's look at the next one. You see, you see, not only is Israel a bush that cannot be consumed, but this book, this book is a burning bush that cannot be consumed. Many have tried. They have failed. It's not working. Uh, it, it's, it's been tried by a lot of people. Now, folk, it's not my purpose this morning uh, to, to further confuse the issue as to relate to the versions. Not my purpose to do that. I always figured that, that, if, that if God has blessed the King James Version for 400 years, why change now? Can you say amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, why, why, why would we want to change now? Uh, you know, the Bible, the Bible says in, in, in Jeremiah, is not thy word, is not thy word like a fire burning in my, in, in my heart, shut up in my bones? Wasn't it the psalmist who said, while I was musing, that is on the word of God, uh, on this precious book, while I was musing, the fire burned. This book is a burning bush that cannot be snuffed out under any circumstance. You know, it's interesting to me that this book has been the subject of more criticism, more lies, more censorship, more bigotry, more hatred, more hair splitting, more vilification, and more meanness than any other book that's ever existed in the history of the world. And yet it's still burning. Amen. It's, it's, still, it's still the most popular book that's ever been written. It's the first book that came off of the printing press. And it's the last book that will ever be considered as the books are opened at the great white throne judgment, along with perhaps the book of records and, and perhaps the Lamb's book of life. But surely this book will be the one that's opened also because it sets the standard whereby a person can get into heaven and stay out of hell. Amen. 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 The enemy attacks it. The liberals deny it. The emperors decree its extermination, but the bush is still burning. Century after century, empire rise and fall, dynasties come and go, but the bush is still burning. Atheists uh, rail upon it, agnostics sneer it, murder, modernists deny its authority, the new evangelicals confuse its purpose, and the fundamentalists are fighting over which Bible law they, they think is best. But the bush is still burning, and it will continue to burn. Listen to what the Bible says of itself. In Psalm 119, 89, it says that the word of the Lord is pure. It's like silver tried in a fire, except purified seven times. And he says, thou shalt preserve them for this generation forever. 
Jesus said in Matthew 5, 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle will pass away, till all be fulfilled. Amen. He said also in Mark 13, 31, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. What are they saying? I'll tell you what they're saying. As long as God lives, there's going to be a Bible. As long as he reigns in heaven, there's going to be this book. You see, the book continues to burn. Burn. It's still burning. It's burning in my heart. It's burning in your heart. It's burning all across the world. Missionaries uh, and, and preachers uh, are still preaching it uh, all over this world of ours. They're hauling out the Bible and and some places have only fragments of it. Some places have no Bible whatsoever, but maybe a fragment or two. And that, and, but the Bible still burns, and it keeps on burning. Mm -hmm. But what about number three? Not only is the nation of Israel a burning bush, not only is the Bible, the Word of God, a burning bush, but the church of the firstborn, the church of Jesus Christ is a bush that's burning and it cannot be snuffed out. Again, many have tried. From the day of Pentecost when it was born until this very moment, the church bush continues to burn. Oh, well, there's been times, no doubt, that it's flickered. It's grown, it's grown dim. But the, but the, but the, but the, the fire has been fanned and, and, and it starts to burn again. And it burns brightly. Go to Rome where they tried to destroy the church. Listen to the crowd as they come into the Colosseum. I've been to the Colosseum. And, and, and literally tens of thousands of people gather in the Colosseum. And, and it's not long until over in the corner, they begin to chant, bring on the Christians. Bring on the Christians. And it catches on. And the entire stadium is ranting, ranting and raving, bring on the Christians. Bring on the Christians. And out of a room, hundreds, Hundreds of Christians come out into the arena. Oh, they had been they had been offered freedom had they renounced their faith, but they wouldn't do that. They poured out into the arena. And then off in another corner, we heard a faint cry bring on the line. Bring on the lions. Bring on the lions. And thousands of people chanting at the top of their voice, Bring on the lions. And then a shoot goes up. And out of that shoot comes hundreds of ferocious, vicious, man-eating lions. And they do their dirty work and they devour every blood-bought Christian that's in the arena. But it didn't, it didn't work. For every, for every one they killed, a ten took their place. For every hundred they killed, a thousand took their place. I think of that time when, when the Aka Indians killed those five missionaries many years ago. Did you know? Did you know that the greatest enlistment of missionaries that have ever taken place in the world took place after those five missionaries were killed? You listen, folk. The church is alive and well on planet Earth. And, 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 and you, you can't put it out. 
it continues. You, you go to Spain uh, where, where the Inquisition took place. Uh, where they tried to <coughs> tried their best to keep the, the opposition from, from catching on and, 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 and complaining against the pagan existing church of that day. But it didn't work. The church bush keeps on burning. Go to China. Go to China where it is believed that over 50 million Christians were burned and destroyed and murdered during the reign of Mao Zedong. But here we are 2019 and it is believed that there are more believers in China today than anywhere else in the world, including America. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 just, you, you just can't stop. You cannot stop the, the, the ongoing uh, progress of the church because, because Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Was he talking about Peter? No. No. If Peter was a little rock, Petra, a little rock. Jesus had asked the disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? They said, well, some say that you're Jeremiah. Some say that you're Elijah, come back to life. Some others say you're, you're that prophet speaking probably of Moses. But he, then Jesus said, whom do ye say that I am? And they said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the rock. That's the rock that's, that, 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 that is the foundation of every church that's ever existed. Every Christian church, regardless of its peculiarity, it is founded on the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And you can't, you can't burn it. It refuses to burn. It's like the bush in the wilderness. The flames, the flames continue to burn. I remember a story that I heard or maybe read years ago, a little town in Pennsylvania had an atheist in it. He was vocal. Everybody knew him. He wrote letters to the editor. He made fun of the churches, made fun of God, made fun of the Bible. He did everything in the world that he could do to, 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 to bring uh, the, the church in disrepute. And one day, one day, one of the leading churches in town caught fire. And it began to burn. Flames were flying in the air. And, and fire trucks came, of course. All the other uh, first responders came. And, and they were putting out the fire. And people, people, almost all the city, all the town came. And, and they were standing around the perimeter watching the fire burn. And, and one of the deacons looked over and saw this atheist standing there with them. And the deacon said to him, wow, never seen you in church before. His answer was classic. He said, I've never seen the church on fire before. Mm. Maybe that's our problem. Mm. Maybe that's our problem. The church has lost its fire. Oh, oh, the church at large hasn't. The church at large continues to burn. But individual churches like ours the flickering fire is going out. And one day, one day if God doesn't do something special here, Aaron, You'll close the doors. You'll lock them up, sell the building. It'll be all over. Yeah, the fire, 
You say, what, what, what do we do? What, what are we supposed to do? I'll tell you what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to fan the flame. Yeah. Fan the flame of, of, of supporting Israel as a nation. Uh, that, that God is blessed and will continue to bless. Fan the flame. Fan the flame of God's word. Don't let anybody uh, speak disruptively about the book. Fan the flame. Read it. Obey it. Distribute it. Get it out there where people can read it. Fan the flame. The same as the church. We have to pray for it. We we have to we have to support it by our attendance, by our tithes, by our our our, our voice, our feet, our hands. We we've got to support this this place because if we don't, the fire will totally go out. And then, where will you go? You see, that's our job. It's to fan the flame. And we do it with our hands, our, 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 our voice, our, our, our feet, our pocketbook. We, we fan the flame any way possible. Just keep it, keep it going. Pour, pour oil on it. Pour gasoline on it. But do something to fan the flame. To keep it burning. Otherwise, It'll go out. Would you bow your heads in prayer, please? Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Maybe there's somebody here today that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior. You, you, you don't know if you died today and go to heaven. And you say, Preacher, I'm concerned about my soul. And I'd like to have you pray for me. Is anybody like that here today? That would say, Preacher, <coughs> include me in the prayer. Would you do this? Just slip your hand up long.